Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I turn into Nimue, the Blood Queen from the new Hellboy movie. First, I start by applying an even coat of liquid foundation lightly all over my face. Then I brush on some powder foundation to set it. Next, I use a dark beige eyeshadow to contour my jawline and make it look more defined. I also use it to contour my cheekbones and make them look higher. Then I use it under my brow bone between my eyes to make it look more deep set. I contour the sides of my nose to make it look straighter on the sides and smaller by the tip. I also add some light shadows to my nasal labial folds. Then I contour above my brow bone to make it look more defined. I also create shadows around my eye under my brow bone to make it look more deep set. I drag a shadow from the outside of my eye slightly outward to make it look more hooded. I also contour my temples a bit. Then I apply shadow over my eyelid to make my eyelids less prominent. I also dust some contour over the front of my cheeks so they look less full. Then I take some white powder and highlight under my eyes and on my cheekbones. And my chin. Then around my mouth. My brow bone. And under my eyebrow to make my eyes look more hooded. Then I use a brown eyebrow gel and draw on my eyebrows. Her eyebrows aren't super full, but they're also not super thin. They have a pretty sharp arch, but they don't drag out too far. Next, I outline my lips with lip stain. Her lips are slightly wider than mine, and her upper lip is slightly more full, so I use the lip stain to shape it. Her bottom lip is also pretty full, so I outline that as well. Then I fill it all in with a darker lip stain. Then I clean up the edges with a deep red lip liner. Then outline and clean up the edges of the red with a light beige liner pencil. Then I set it with some powder. Then I take some dark brown eyeliner and lightly brush it in the corners of my mouth to create a crease effect. Then I use a highlighter to highlight my brow bone. I also highlight the top of my nose and over my cheekbones. And around my mouth and chin over my brows, then I blend it all in. Next I take a dark brown eyeshadow and drag it out from the outer corners of my eye. And I apply it over my eyelids to make them look less prominent. Then I put in some bluish green contact lenses. They make a really dramatic change to my eye color. Next, I apply some black liquid eyeliner along my lash line. I don't drag it out far past my eye and I don't wing it up. Then I line my lower lash line with a brown eyeliner pencil. And I use a Q-tip to smudge and blend it. I apply some more white eyeshadow above my eyelids to bring them forward and highlight them. And I blend it in. I also highlight the top of my cheekbones some more. And above my lip and my chin. Then I take the brown liner pencil and line over the black eyeliner to blend it more. I also tight line the tear duct and waterline. Then I blend it again with a Q-tip. I take some contour and apply it under the outer corners of my eye and drag it over my cheekbones to soften them. Next, I curl my eyelashes. Then I apply a generous amount of mascara over the top lashes. And lightly on the bottom lashes. Then I take my hair down and braid it. I leave it down because the long wig will cover it. I put a wig cap on to hold down any loose hairs. Now let me slip into something more comfortable. I put the dress on before I put on the wig so I don't mess up the wig once it's on my head. I styled this wig myself. I will show you how I did that later in this video. I just put it on. Then I use a light beige liner pencil and draw on a little hairline. And that's pretty much it for the makeup.
Now I'm going to show you how I made the full costume. First, I drew out a simple pattern for the top of the dress. As you can see, it's a very basic, loose tank top shape with a low V neckline. I folded some thin white fabric and cut out the pattern on the center fold. Here you can see the front and back unfolded. For the back I just used the same pattern but made a much higher neckline. Then while the fabric is inside out I pinned down the sides to sew it. This is what it looks like all sewn together. It's a pretty basic piece. Next I take some long rectangular panels of the white fabric and pin them to the bottom of the shirt. I pin one panel on each side of the dress. And then I pin one panel in the front and one in the back. And I drape on some loose pieces of fabric as well. Also, the edges of these panels do not need to be finished. In fact, the more raggedy, the better. And then I just sew all the panels on. Now to make this dress look dingier, I make some muddy gray looking color of cheap craft paints with water until it's a milky consistency. Then I dip the dress in it. And I make sure to thoroughly soak the dress in the paint water mixture. Then I hang it up to dry. This is what it looks like all dried. Now to add all the wound holes. First, I trace where I want the holes with chalk. I carefully reference images of the actual costume to know the placement and size of each hole. Then I use an orange chalk to trace the areas that the fake blood will generally be. The reason I do this with chalk is because you can rub it off with a damp cloth. Then I use some cheap $1 craft paints in red, black, and brown. And I start tracing all the holes in paint. I also smudge some of the redness dripping down from the holes, but I will do that more thoroughly in a bit. After I'm done tracing every single hole, I begin applying the paint to look like it's smudged and running blood. During this entire process, I carefully reference images of Nimue the Blood Queen's dress, trying to replicate all the shapes of the holes and the way the blood runs from each of them. For me, this was a really fun and relaxing process. On her left rib, she has a really big stain, so I recreated that with lots and lots of paint. Then with scissors, I carefully cut out each hole in their specific shapes. And here's the final result. What a beautiful mess. Next I made a cardigan which was super simple. I just used any oversized coat or long sleeve shirt pattern and it worked perfectly fine. After I was done sewing it all together I used some scissors and roughed up the edges of the cardigan. You could actually probably find a pre-made cardigan at a thrift shop or something and just cut it up with some scissors. I just add holes and stuff throughout the entire piece. And I also added some extra fabric to the ends of the sleeves to extend them. 
And here it is all finished. Next I'm going to make her super cool crown. I found some fake rubber branches at a craft store. I cut off all the little branches from the stem, then I used the stem to form a circle that fit my head and hot glued it together. When that was dry I started taking the little branches and gluing them to the circular base. I glued on one branch at a time, placing them in the direction I needed them to be. I started from the middle of each side and made the branches go forward and up towards the front. This was actually pretty fun to intertwine all the branches together. Be as generous as you need to be with the glue to hold everything in place. I also used some thin strips of craft foam to wrap around the base to give a viney effect for the areas that didn't have branches glued to the back. Thinking about it, you could actually probably do this with some twigs from your backyard if you're on a really tight budget. Then I took a heat gun lightly to dissolve all the little strings and webs of hot glue. Then, to cover all the glue, or to change the color if needed, I coat it in a matte black spray paint. Once I finish, the crown just sits snugly on the top of my head. This is definitely now the coolest crown I own. Now I'm going to show you how to do the wig. This is a pretty simple style. I start with a long straight black wig with brown highlights. Then I separate a very side swept part. I let it hang pretty loose in the front to the side, then twist it and clip it in the back. I do use some glue to hold it in place, but I don't have footage of that. I also twist it into a bun in the back. And I secure the hair with glue hairspray. For the red hood, I just folded the top and sewed a slight curve in the back, and I bunched it up at the neckline. Then I took the long panels that cover my body and bunched that up at the neckline as well. I just sew a straight, loose stitch, then grab one of the threads and pull and slide it while scrunching the fabric together. Then I take the neckline from the hood and the neckline from the cape and pin and sew it together. And that's pretty much it for the hood! I didn't need a pattern for this, but there are plenty of patterns available for hoods like this. And that's how I made the Blood Queen costume. This costume was so much fun to make and wear. I am so excited for the new Hellboy movie starring David Harbour from Stranger Things as Hellboy. And Mila Jovovich, one of my favorite actresses, is Nimue the Blood Queen. You can buy tickets now for the new Hellboy movie by clicking the link in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching guys. Bye!